If you wanna see an epic tiny kitchen transformation, you're gonna to love today's video. Hey there, it's Christina from the DIYMommy.com. I am so excited. We're finally finished the little kitchen in our tiny lake house. In case you're new here, we purchased a 460 square foot tiny little cabin by a lake for our family to enjoy and for us to turn into our second vacation rental. We demoed the whole thing, switched up the floor plan. We finished the tiny bedroom in the space. We also finished the little entryway. And now my favorite space in this place is complete. It's the tiny kitchen. I published a part one video of this kitchen makeover, so make sure to watch that before you watch this part two. I will leave that down in the description box below as well as links to all of the other makeovers in this cabin so far. So let's pick up where we left off. So originally we wanted to have a cabinet over the range hood here, but just the way that the ceiling joists are, Sean couldn't put the venting you know, further back towards the wall to make this work. So I'm gonna have to scrap that upper cabinet. I'm just gonna return it. We're gonna create a custom bulkhead up there, um, which will allow us a bit more space now between the stove top and the range hood, which I prefer. And then we'll try to do something custom and cute there maybe with some shiplap. Sean is building a little bulkhead for over the range hood with some scrap two by fours. And then he's going to use some of the scrap shiplap we had that we installed on the ceiling to clad the front of this bulkhead. I think this is a good solution considering we weren't able to use a cabinet There's up that venting that we need to cover, but then it also really ties into the ceiling. Now we're installing the cabinetry on the wall. We're just installing this rail into the studs in the wall and then hanging those Ikea cabinets onto the rail. I'm adjusting the feet at the bottom to make sure that the cabinets are nice and level. Now Sean is drilling a hole into the bottom of the sink cabinet so that we can put all of the plumbing through. I'm just making sure that it all goes through and he did it perfectly, it all fits. We are using some Ikea veneer and walnut wood kitchen countertops for these cabinets. I think they're gonna add a lot of warmth and beauty to this kitchen. I went back and forth on the tile for the kitchen for a long time, but since the appliances are really gonna be the showcase of this kitchen, I didn't wanna compete with them with a really fancy tile, so I'm just going for very inexpensive, simple, six by six glossy ceramic white tile. But how I'm going to, or how we are going to install this is in a brick pattern to kind of give it that retro look, but it's still going to be, you know, nice and easy to install, very simple, and it's gonna allow these appliances to really take center stage. Sean is spreading some mastic onto the walls and then I am installing these tiles. We're just using some spacers to make sure that they're one eighth of an inch apart from each other. And then we're staggering them in a brick lay effect to give them a little bit of interest and make them look a little bit retro to match that sort of vintage look of this kitchen. I'm using a tile cutter to cut the tiles and then for any sort of awkward cuts, Sean is using his grinder outside for around the outlets, etc. Then I'm just using a sponge to wash off all the excess mastic and then using a scrap piece of trim to make sure all of these tiles are level. Now I have to go home and pick up the kids from school, so Sean is burning the midnight oil and finishing all of the install of the tiles. We're installing it all the way across the back wall of the kitchen and then on the side where the stove is going to be. Now Sean's finishing up that range hood bulkhead with that excess shiplap that we had, and I love how this looks. He designed this all and I think it's absolutely genius. Now I'm taking some paint and I'm painting the rest of the kitchen that isn't tiled. I am using a color called Blank Canvas by Bear. It's a very soft white color, contrasts slightly with the ultra pure white color of the trim and the ceiling, and it's still going to bounce all of the beautiful natural light around and make this room look a lot bigger than it is. I'm also taking some ultra pure white and pre-painting all of the casing that's going around the windows and the doors. We're also installing some crown molding. This is crown molding that we salvaged from our first lake house renovation. And I'm using this quartz color grout for the tile. I wanted something that contrasted a little bit with the white tile so we could see that detail of the brick lay pattern. Oh, 
I'm applying the grout into all of the grooves of the tile and then I'm just wiping it off as I go with a sponge. Sean's starting on the left, I'm starting on the right, and he is a lot faster than me, so he pretty much ended up doing most of this. I can do it, but I'm definitely slow. Now Sean's finishing up the crown molding around that bulkhead above the range hood, and I like how that ties everything in so nicely and gives it a finished look. He's also installing the casing around the windows and we're painting this ultra pure white as well. Now to install this beautiful range hood, this was gifted to us by Unique Appliances. The range hood and all the appliances in this kitchen were my muse for the entire kitchen. I love the mint green color so much. So this is going to match that beautiful mint range hood that I showed you and we're going to have a fridge that matches as well and it's a gas range and it's only 24 inches wide so it's nice and tiny perfect for a tiny home. The cutest stove I've ever seen in my life. Right? Very cute. <laughs> we're pushing the stove into the right hand side of this kitchen underneath the range hood. It's only 24 inches wide so it's the perfect size for a tiny kitchen just like this. Loving the retro look and I will link these appliances down in the description box below and you'll see that they're definitely far more budget friendly than a lot of retro look appliances you'll see. I'm finishing adding caulking to this corner of the tile. Now Sean is building out this peninsula so we used two Ikea kitchen cabinets for this you probably saw in the previous video. He's taking some scrap 1x6s and 1x8s and just attaching them to the back of the peninsula to make it nice and sturdy and then taking some more of this extra shiplap we had and cladding the front to give it sort of a retro farmhouse look. Now he's taking another one of those pieces of countertop in that walnut veneer color. Now I'm installing all of the drawers to these IKEA cabinets. I just assembled them in the living room area and now I'm adding the brackets to the inside of the IKEA cabinetry and placing the drawers inside. Pretty straightforward, just a little bit time consuming, but I really love these drawers for storage in the peninsula. Now Sean is cutting out the hole for the kitchen sink. This is a little bit scary because we were hoping that the template that was provided was good. It's always a little bit scary when you're cutting countertops. Now we're placing the kitchen sink inside. This one is nice and big, but we still have lots of room on either side of the countertop for prep work, etc. And it fits perfectly, which we are so happy about. This kitchen sink I found on Amazon, and the reason I love it is because it's nice and deep, so great for a lakeside rental like this when you have to clean a lot of things. And I love how it comes with all these extras that fit right in the sink, like a cutting board, a strainer, and a draining rack. We finished off the sink area with this copper colored faucet. I also found this on Amazon. I wanted to add copper into this kitchen and I think this was a good way to do it. So this sink is so cool. You can place the cutting board right in these grooves here. It has this draining rack that you can just unfold and roll up. And then it also has this strainer that's built in. I also like that it is black stainless steel. I put a white sink in our previous rental and I sort of regret that. So this one's gonna be a lot easier to clean. For the light fixture above the sink, I'm just using this simple black farmhouse fixture. And then Sean's drilling some holes in the ceiling to add some recessed lighting, just to give a lot more light to this kitchen. So we're gonna push the fridge in place, and this has got to be my favorite appliance I've ever seen in my life. Now Sean is taking some extra trim we had on hand and trimming out the front of the peninsula. I couldn't find a countertop at Ikea that was the right depth for this peninsula, so we do have to trim out the front of it to make the countertop fit. 
I wish I could have found something that worked, but I didn't, and I actually do like how this turned out in the end. Now we're starting to do all of those finishing touches that just seem to take a lot longer than you think. So all of the caulking on the trim, all of the touch up painting, and all of that final detail work. Now I'm adding some floating shelves to above the peninsula. I wanna use these as storage for cups, for mugs, and also for all of the coffee station supplies. The coffee station is gonna go right beneath these shelves. I'm also installing some simple black hardware onto the cabinet fronts. I found these on Amazon and they match with the entry piece that I did earlier this month. Sean is also installing some pendant lights above the peninsula. I love the retro look of these and these ones match the one that I used in the bedroom. I picked up these Vauxlav Ikea chairs. I've always loved them and I feel like this is the perfect application for them because they're gonna be easy to clean. They're gonna be a little bit of a neutral color in the space but still have some texture and they were relatively affordable. So I'm gonna assemble four of these for the kitchen table area. I'm placing all of the coffee pods for the coffee area in this canister, placing that on the shelving. I found these adorable mugs at World Market in the spring when we visited the States. These cups are from Ikea, as are these wine glasses, and I'm placing these all on the floating shelves above the peninsula. These mugs were from Canadian Tire, and I love how they add that copper feel to the kitchen, adding some cookbooks atop this microwave here, and then just kind of moving everything around to make it look cute. For the table in here, I'm using the small round table I found at Ikea. I had this in our camper, but I thought it would look better here and I'll find something different for our camper. Placing those chairs around and I wanna set the table to see how it looks all set. I'm adding this runner into the kitchen just to give it a little bit of interest and comfort. This one is from Ruggable. I will link it down in the description box below. Now I'm just taking some local dried florals and I'm making an arrangement for the table and a couple of arrangements for around the kitchen as well. I love using dried florals in rentals because they last forever. I'm also adding a kettle to this corner of the kitchen by the fridge. As a reminder, here's how the kitchen looked when we first bought this tiny cabin. And here it is now. I am so happy with how this tiny space turned out. It just looks so much brighter and so much more modern, but with that little vintage flair that I love. This fridge is one of my favorite pieces. It's going to hold so many things for our guests and for ourselves. And I love the matching stove and the range hood as well. I'm really happy with the simple retro tile that we installed and just using lots of white bright colors in this space made it feel a lot bigger than it is. I love how the open shelving turned out and I really like how this small coffee bar area turned out too. The warm countertops just give this room a little bit of that warmth and character. And there's actually quite a lot of storage in these Ikea kitchen cabinets. I also love how this custom peninsula turned out. Things I don't love as much, I really wish we wouldn't have had to trim out the front of the counter of the peninsula because I couldn't find a deeper piece of countertop. I also wish that the fridge opened up the other way, but we had to put it here because of how the gas connection worked for the stove. And the back bank of cabinetry is slightly taller than the peninsula because the floor in this cabin slopes down to the center. Other than those small things, I'm really happy with the rest of it and I just cannot wait to use this space. If you wanna know more details about this kitchen renovation, see more photos and see about how much we spent on this renovation, I did write a blog post all about it. I will leave a link to that down in the description box below. 
Thank you so much for watching today's video. I hope you enjoyed this kitchen makeover. Let me know what you think of it down in those comments below. I would love to know. So now all we have left in this tiny cabin is the living space, the wee little bathroom, plus in the spring we're going to be doing some landscaping. So I hope you stick around for those videos. Thanks so much for watching. If you want to watch more DIY and decor ideas on a budget, I'm going to leave some more videos that I hope you will enjoy watching next right up here. Mm -hmm.